Welcome back to another Loaded Pocket tutorial. Now, I have shown you how I made a Loaded Pocket as a box, but a lot of the Loaded Pockets are squeezy like this so that they fold flat. So I thought, right, okay, let's take the box I made using the Tonics uh, Special Memories Box Maker die, and let's see if we can make it so that it squeezes flat. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make the, uh, the whole loaded pocket using three different pockets. But what you can do then is mix and match all these, whichever orientation you want. So you could have, if you see there's one slim one and a thicker one. And I'm gonna show you how to reduce the size so we got two heights as well, but you could have two of the thicker ones. You could have two thick ones with the two of the shorter ones, each side, up to you. So it's a bit of a mix and match loaded pocket. So to make it, you will need your cardstock. So this is just a 220 GSM black cardstock. And for each pocket, you're gonna need one sheet of A4. So I've got three sheets ready to go for the three pockets that I'm gonna show you. And then you'll need an extra piece of A4, which I've cut in half. So we're gonna cut it uh, down the center like that. So I did manage to get two of them out. Now I thought it'd be fun to make a little Halloween one. So I'm gonna be using the Monster Mayhem collection from Nitwits, because I thought that'd be really nice, fun one. Now, don't look at the quality of this one. This is just on some copy of paper on standard print just to show you what you get in the kit because I'm not gonna finish it, I'm just gonna show you the basic structure today. But the actual quality when you print it out on your paper is much better than what you can see here. As I said, this was just um, a draft print on copy of paper just so you can see the elements which you'll be able to add on afterwards and some of the lovely other papers you could have. So. As I said, you're going to want to cut one of these for each pocket you want. So I'm going to show you how to make three pockets. So just to save time, I've already just cut three of these. And then the centerpiece, as I said, you cut your A4 in half. And in the box version, we needed these, if you turn around, these two tabs. But for this one, we don't. So as long as these two are within your cardstock, it'll be fine. So I've just got some tape there. I'm just gonna run it through my machine. So you will need an A4 machine for this. So there's one. Let's take the tape off. That in the bin this can go in the bin as well and then I'm just going to do the same again on my second one so as it's going through the machine I have got it that way it won't fit that way okay. and there's my second one cut. So the top and bottom can go in the bin as well. That's all my die cutting done for the box itself or the um, loaded pocket itself. I'm going to grab some nice long scissors because what I'm going to do is just cut straight down those two score lines there and here and when we get to this one I'm just going to carry on down. So just basically just cutting it all off. So what we're left with is that arched shape piece and what would normally be the base of your box. Obviously we're not making a box today, so it's not gonna be a base. So here we go. 
and and then what I'm going to do is flip this one over so this is the rougher side this is the nice finished front and I'm just going to add my glue making sure I get nice and close to that edge so you don't want the recipient thinking it's a pocket if it starts to come loose and just some glue so I'm putting it back to back lining up those two corners I'm just bringing my Teflon tool which is great for my black cardstock because it won't mark it and I'm just going to leave that off to the side to dry. So whilst it's drying, we're going to make our pockets. So let's bring in the three complete die cuts and my scoreboard. So ready to go. And I've got my piece into my scoring board. Now what I'm focusing on is keeping my piece against this left hand side. It doesn't matter where my piece is here because we're just scoring from this side here. You can touch the top if you want to be a bit more secure. And what you'll notice is this score line is at the two inch mark. And what we're gonna do is work back from there. So we'll start with our shallow pocket, the thin one which I used here and that was an inch wide in the end so what we're going to do sorry half an inch wide so we're going to go back quarter of an inch so that's one and three quarters and then back another quarter so we're at one and a half so that is our squeezy edge but I need a piece to glue it onto my loaded pocket so I'm just going to go back half an inch again so that's at one one and a half and one and three quarters what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same so it's one one and a half and you can't see it, so it's this one. You can just see the channel pop there. there Alternatively, what you could do, if you uh, want, is just to flip it over and you'll get it there. And then, so I've done my sides, but I also need the bottom to be squeezy as well. So I'm gonna bring it over. And luckily, again, it's still on the two. So there's my one and three quarters, one and a half, and one inch. So that's my narrow one. But whilst I've got my scoreboard out, I'm gonna do my wider one as well. So my wider one, I actually worked on a one, two, three. <laughs> so I just counted across three, and counted across one, two, three. As you can see, I was being really technical when I worked this one out. So. Basically, it's one and a quarter, and um, one, two, three, here we are. So it's one and one, two, three, four, five eighths. One and five eighths. But the way I did it was just go one, two, three, and one, two, three. So that's my two squeezy bits. And again, I want a half inch to stick it on. So I'm just gonna come back to three quarters of an inch here. Flip it around. So one, two, three. Let's move here. One, two, three. And then one, oh, sorry, three quarters. And we're going to do the same here. So one, two, three. And one, two, three and then three quarters. So there we are, my very technical measuring. 
And then this one, I'm gonna show you how it can be brought down a little bit. And I did go for the wider one here, the one, two, three method, but you could do it slim as well, it's up to you. So again, the sides are gonna be exactly the same. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then half an inch. One, two, three, one, two, three, you can see it's still one and a quarter, and then three quarters of an inch. Now this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm lining up my edge with my two, so it's just butting up to there, and this time, instead of going down three, the first thing I'm gonna do is one, two, three, all the way down. And then that is gonna drop it down. And you can choose then, if you wanna drop it further, you can go one, two, three again. Or if you just want that little drop like that, what you can do is go one, two, three on this side. So it's totally up to you how much of a drop. So if you come across more, you'll have a lower pocket. If you come this side of the score line, you can have a higher pocket. So there we are. And then one, two, three, four. That'll give me my half an inch to glue my tabs. So let's go back to the first one we did, which is the narrow pocket. Now I'm gonna take my nice big scissors and you can see this is my half inch for gluing. So everything the other side of that we don't need. So I'm just gonna cut it off. Same with the sides, we don't need them. And you don't even need to be neat with this because this is just for gluing on. So just roughly cut down them. And I actually do that on all three of my pockets in one go, here we are. So you can see I'm not being particularly neat or anything, I'm just going down because you're not gonna see any of this. So wherever your last score line is, that's where you're just going to cut down. Okay, and we're going to place these in the bin. So that's my narrow one here. So this now is the front. So for my squeezy pocket, I'm going to bend it back. Turn it over. On the next score line, I'm going to come this direction and then finally come back onto the box itself so that I can glue it on. So this will be the front of my pocket, there's my gusset and there's the tab for gluing on. So again, I'm going to bring it back, take it forward and then bring it back. And I'm gonna do the same with the base. But what I'm gonna do, first of all, is just cut off these two tabs just to make it a bit easier. So we're gonna fold it back onto the box. Fold it up that way. And fold it back again. So we've done exactly the same on every one of my pockets. So you'll see now, they'll all squeeze. But what the problem is now is, those squeezy bits are going to meet there. So what I'm gonna do, that center one, which is the mountain -y bit, I'm just going to cut it off at a triangle like that on every one of those mountains. Easy if I turn it over now. So that was the middle one between
between those two score lines you made if we ignore our half inch gluey tab. So just folded them back and trimmed them off. So now, that's the front, you'll see those little triangles being cut out will mean it can squeeze together. And now you can just miter off these as well. Just like we do with our albums, when we're doing pockets onto them, we can miter them off as well, just so we're getting rid of some of the bulk. Okay, so if you didn't get that, don't worry, because it's exactly the same on each of the pockets. So let's do it on the wide one this time. It may be easier for you to see as well on this one. So I'm gonna cut off, well, let me do on this one first. This was my drop down one. So let's cut off the extra tabs each side. So if you remember, the front of the box is here, so we're just folding that one back. We'll fold this one at the same time. Then you're making the squeezy bit, so we're bringing it back. So you're folding it back. And then just folding the final bit back into the center of the pocket. Same with the base. Fold that way, fold that way, fold that way. Now, of course, if you want an extra thick pocket, you would just, do you remember when we scored one, two, three, one, two, three? Just do half inches, whatever you want. It's just the same technique for each of them. So now we've got our pockets. If we fold them back, we've got those little mountainy bits. So we're just gonna trim off the centers. The easiest way to do it. And this one. And this one. So that is now my extra deep one. Let's just make to these corners as well. If you want to put your glue on first before mitering to get it to the edge, you can. So that's my full height, but deeper. And now this now has got that extra bit here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut up to that cut line there and actually keep going until we get to that score line. You can see, so I carried on all the way through to there and cut across. Because if you remember that score line here didn't exist with the die, only this one. We created that extra one inside to create that little drop. And again, cut away that bit. And now exactly the same. So back forwards back so that's the first squeezy gusset back forward and back back forwards and back and again those two mountains there we're just going to trim them off. And miter the four corners on the bottom. So I've got some nice strong tape here, some nice score tape. So I'm working on the back of the pockets now. And what we're gonna do, so I've got them face down, is place my tape on 
under all three of those half inch tabs we created. Right, so that's my shallow one. Nope, that's my shallow one. That's my deep one. And this is my drop down one. So I think I need to bring in the central piece now. Let's get rid of these bits. So now it's up to you how you're going to arrange it. I liked a thick one on the back just to add stability. So this is going to be the back of my pocket. So I'm just working now down towards these bottom corners. So you can see I've just taken my tape and folded it at 45 degrees there. So now I can maneuver it because there's no glue on the left hand side here. And I can really get it into the correct position and get these ones as well then. Okay, stand it up, line it all up. Oh, the tape went back onto itself. Do what, I'm just going to take it all off. <laughs> Let's live dangerously. Yeah. So let's get it all touching. And at the bottom there as well. So there we are, we've attached one pocket that's already standing up. So this is now my shallow pocket. Of course I could put in, uh, two deep ones, one each side. So we're gonna live dangerously again. Take them all off. Standing my pocket up. And bringing, oh, this is, this is the drop down one. Nearly made a mistake then. This is the shallow one. That was close. So again, I'm going to stand up my pocket and bring my envelope to it. This is much easier when you're not trying to do it on a camera as well. You can see it's folding nice and flat, and this is now my dropped down one. So I'll keep it nice and flat. Stand it up. And line it up on the left and right. And press it down. And there we have our loaded pocket which stands up but also squeezes nice and flat. Now this die comes with some mats and layers so if you're doing a full size one you have got that one as well. So if you're going to cover the back you can use those two together but if you've got your drop down one because it's already lower you can use just that one. So I have cut a few. I haven't cut one of them yet, but I will do as well. So let's have a look. This is the front. And I thought I did. I cut one with the word monster near the top. And we're just 
going to put that. Hopefully we'll see the word monster. Get rid of the glue. Let's get my tool in there. Of monster and then I've got another one of these patterns so I'll slide that into the pocket as well and then I chose a bit of a plainer one for the front And the reason being is, when I come to decorate this then, I can add those monsters and things onto that bit. So we'll glue that one. And then, Glue this one. So this would go on the bottom. And now we just need to cut one more piece with this curved bit. So I wanted to show you that paper before I cut into it to show the quality. And there we are, there. So I could have gone for another contrasting paper. So different from my box now, because we've got those squeezy bits, we're not decorating in there, but if you did want to put a little strip in there, of course you could. So there we go, a nice squeezy loaded pocket using the special memories die, which is made for, uh, which was designed to make boxes for your memory books, but obviously can make some lovely loaded pocket bases as well. So if you do have a go at this, I'd really, really love to see what you make. So share your photos with me by going to Facebook and joining my group, Paper Crafting with Paul. I'll share a link in the description below. Please, if you've enjoyed, click that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button too. If you want to be notified, you do need to hit that bell icon as well. Okay, but I really want to see how you make your loaded pockets as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon.